Well, our biggest challenge right now is uh, loan growth. How can we increase our operating efficiency with the razor thin margins that we're dealing with right now? I would think technology is the greatest thing that we try to keep up with. One of the issues that we're struggling with is to see how we can attract younger members. The emerging tools and trends are going to meet the needs of the next generation. What we plan to do is advertise, advertise, and advertise more. We are safe, strong, and healthy. We need to continue to sell the credit union difference. We are getting ready to launch new security measures. Attracting new members, increase usage per member, deepen our relationship. Be a member, be a member, be a member. And to get the word out there online, loan application. Aggressive marketing. We can be better than the banks. We're having great success with this. Word of mouth advertising. School branches. It's going to be a real challenge. Multicultural outreach. Remote deposits. We're very active in the community. Financial literacy. Over some incentives. Checking accounts. Relationship pricing. Cross selling. Youth market. What a challenge. Be more efficient. Smart phones. 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 Smart And we are very excited to see how this is going to come out. On behalf of Co-op Financial Services, welcome to Think 11. I'm Caroline Lane. And I'm Samantha Paxson. This is our fourth annual conference, and we are thrilled and really so proud to see how much Think has grown since our first meeting in 2008. In fact, this year we actually had to close registration because we sold out. Yes, you've made Think 11. Yay. <laughs> you've made Think 11 a real e-ticket attraction, that's for sure. And we think it's going to be a very fun and inspiring ride for all of you. That's because your experience is really at the heart of this year's conference. As you heard and you saw in our introductory video, we at Co-op listen to you. And we aggregate and synthesize and even harmonize what we learn from you into working solutions for credit unions. Everything starts with a dialogue. To keep the conversation going, we've made Think a year-round affair. On Think's Facebook page, you can share, link, and comment. Like us. Follow us on Think and Twitter for tweets of insight. And read what our experts have to say on our Think blog and website. Also check out the spring issue of Think Magazine. There's copies out in the hallway. You'll get more insights about this conference, including some thoughts about our great list of guest speakers. We invite you to share your challenges, your ideas, and your stories. All year long, the thinking never stops. Now, over the next few days, we hope to start a continuing conversation about the challenges in our industry. The idea behind Think is to put our minds together and see what ignites. We've gathered at the happiest place on earth, but we aim to make things a little provocative. So expect to be taken out of your comfort zone. Expect to be challenged, and be prepared to challenge what you hear. We're here to think. Now this year's conference is built around four themes. These represent the biggest challenges that credit unions face. Today we'll think about vision and operational excellence. Tomorrow we'll focus on the opportunity for organic growth. And Wednesday, we'll conclude with what we think will be a really interesting discussion about selling our story. And this year, we've assembled what has to be the best lineup of guest speakers I think we've ever had. I helped choose them, so of <laughs> course I'm going to thank that. <laughs> By hearing from them, we, find, we want you to find information and inspiration that you can really use to make credit unions better. To make sure you get what you've needed, um, we've invited our speakers to participate in what we like to call Think It Out sessions. These will be round table discussions or extended Q&A sessions that will take place after the talks in our four themes. You'll be able to engage in more dialogue than ever before, and you'll get an immediate idea of how these in expert insights apply to your business. And this year, what we really want to focus on are the takeaways. For example, how does personal passion apply to your credit union? How do you make more with less? How do you engage and re-engage your membership? 
And how do we tell the credit union story to drive new membership? Another exciting development for this year's conference is that we'll be awarding the first ever Think Prize. I'm especially excited about this one. We introduced the Think Prize concept last year to motivate new ways of thinking within the credit union movement. We received entries from all over the country. Tomorrow morning, I will be joining Freda McDonald our, of MasterCard, and she's our uh, Think Sponsor, our Think Prize Sponsor, to provide more details. You'll also hear from our finalists and learn about their great ideas. And then, tomorrow night, we will be naming the first ever recipient of the Think Prize. Now, the Think Prize rewards a big idea but we'll also be rewarding one that can, be can, that can be contained in 140 characters or less on Twitter. So for everyone who is not able to attend in person, we need your help in bringing Think to them via Twitter. So we're encouraging all of you to tweet about what you're seeing, hearing, and thinking about during the conference. And make sure to label your messages with the co-op think hashtag. That means pound sign co-op think. We'll be tracking all of the tweets because at the end of the conference, we'll be naming the most killer tweet of 2011. So the author of the grand prize, or the author of this tweet will win a grand prize. So it's all about the quality of the message. It's not just that you're over at a small world eating a churro. <laughs> and if you've never done the Twitter before, now's your chance to learn what it's all about. So please check out the Think website, Twitter, Facebook, and on-site conference announcements for all the details about how to participate. It's one more reason to join our Think community. So from the real world to the virtual world, we'll be doing a lot of thinking in this room, for sure. The next few days will be a real Think Fest, right here at Disneyland. Yes, Disneyland. Like Mary Poppins might say, Think is practically perfect in every way, just like Disney. <laughs> <laughs> what better place to explore the themes for this year's conference than at the original theme park? That's right. So let's turn our attention for a few minutes to where we are. Let's see what we can learn from Disneyland. First, when you enter the park, take a moment to look at this sign over the entrance. Some of you may have seen this last night as we walked inside Disneyland. It says, here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. This vision is an invitation to transport yourself to a place that's ruled by imagination. It's a creative vision. This is something that we'll be thinking a lot more about with our first speaker today, Sir Ken Robinson. But notice that the message doesn't promise fun or joy or even entertainment. The sign does not say, welcome to the happiest place on earth. No, this vision is about the pursuit of happiness. By telling us up front that we're leaving behind today, Disneyland appeals to our sense of possibility and opportunity. Disneyland provides you with the space to create your own happiness. What is the Disney product after all? It's happiness. And happiness, as our friends at MasterCard might tell us, <laughs> is priceless. So hold this thought, if you will. When your members enter your credit union, are you giving them the experience or the opportunity for a happier experience than a bank? To deliver that experience requires that we are happy too. So we need to have a passion for what we do. Before we launch into When You Wish Upon a Star, <laughs> let's get real for a minute. For some of us, when we think of Disneyland, we don't think of the grand vision. We think of this, Disney lines. 45 minutes for Autopia proves that even Disney has not perfected the art of operations. And Sam and I know a few things about Disneyland operations because <laughs> we both worked here as young adults and um, <laughs> you forgive the hairstyle, Caroline. <laughs> it was the 80s. <laughs> but um, I was a trainer in the Disney University and one of my favorite stories about working at Disneyland had a little bit to do with operational excellence and we had sort of a pastime we cast members and that's what we're called after all is we would during the summertime after the fireworks show there would be as some of you know this Tinkerbell flies from the top of the Matterhorn down to an undisclosed location behind uh, uh, the Tinkerbell toy shop ironically and so it was great sport for we cast members to go backstage and we watched Tinkerbell fly, and of course she's on a cable, I'm sorry to ruin the magic, but she is on a cable. <laughs> and some nights, 
if the wind was just right and she got a really good push from the top of the Matterhorn, she'd come flying down that cable and she would be landing in this little tower about 20 feet off the ground. Two guys are holding a mattress inside this tower and she'd just crash face first into this mattress. And it was so fun to watch, so that was great. So we loved that, but what was even better were the nights when she did not get a good push because she'd come gamely down and start kind of petering out and she would stop short, still suspended on her cable. And consummate performer that she was, she wouldn't get flustered. She would stay perfectly in character as long as she knew that guests could still see her. She's pulling herself hand over hand down this cable, smiling and keeping very tink-like until she knows guests can't see her, and then she starts grimacing. And I know she had a few words for the people at the receiving end of that cable, so really the moral of the story, other, other than just being funny, is that really the idea at Disneyland is that we have a concept of show here, and when things go wrong within a company, within an organization, within a business, they inevitably will. Keep your game face on. Keep smiling. Don't let them see all of the backstage drama save that for the backstage. Speaking of staying in character and show, uh, when I worked at Disneyland, I was a dancer. And uh, <laughs> in the Very Merry Christmas Parade, I was an ostrich. And that was an interesting audition. And then I was also a butterfly in the Electric Light Parade. And uh, one thing that um, I thought was really interesting when I was in the parades is that I thought that once I auditioned, that was it, I was in. I didn't have to audition again. It's not the case. Every time you're in a parade, you have to continue to audition. So, um, and those, these auditions are not easy. You get in early in the morning and they go late into the evening and you're fighting for your spot in the parades. And um, I thought that was such an interesting lesson from Disney because not only did we have to bring our A game, as Caroline talked about, in the parade itself, but you had to fight every time for that spot. And there was always a new crop of dancers that were beautiful and had this amazing technique. And I really, um, even though I was about 16 there, um, I was fighting for that spot. And it really taught me about being excellent in what I do. And I, I still pull from that today in my job at co-op. So it's a, it's a good lesson for us all to remember. Yes, you do, Sam. <laughs> So Disneyland demonstrates that operational excellence is really something to strive for. I mean, could it ever really be attained? So what does Disneyland teach us about pursuing the goal of operational excellence? First, it helps us to understand that Disneyland doesn't think about what they're doing as operations in the way that most businesses would define the term. In fact, all around the park, you really do see evidence of this because Disneyland redefines the meaning of operations. What other businesses think of as mundane and technical details, Disneyland makes part of the show. So for example, even the custodial hosts, whose job it is to keep the park clean, they're called cast members. They're trained to play a role using the literal tools of their trade. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, every effort is made to hide the wires. Imagineering at Disneyland is all about putting the human touch back into the back-end technology. From the smiles of It's a Small World, to the thrills of Space Mountain, the screams of the Haunted Mansion, and even the chuckles on the Jungle Cruise. Keeping up with technology is not the end goal of operations. The end goal, then, is to evoke feelings in people. Disneyland shows us that the end purpose of operations is always about creating a better guest experience. Is that how we think about operations? So consider the Disneyland approach to operational excellence. Think about how your credit union can blend superior guest service with high-end financial management tools that really make people happy. With that in mind, at Disneyland, you can see a connection between operational excellence and our next theme, which is organic growth. The connection, of course, is happiness. We see it in the vision and in operations and in this simple fact, people come back to Disneyland. Why? Because we like you, Disneyland. <laughs> because when people like you and you make them happy, they come back for more and more and more. That's the definition of organic growth. 
Shortly after Disneyland opened in 1955, Roy Disney explained the business, how the business worked, to the Wall Street Journal. He said, we don't do anything in one line with giving thought to its likely profitability in other lines. The product is practically eternal. It's the circle of life. Disney milks everything. Nothing is wasted, and that's by design. As Disneyland has demonstrated since it first opened, uh, organic growth does not have to happen by chance. As Disneyland has shown us, you can cultivate growth. Cultivate growth. Maybe that's how we should think about organic growth. At your credit union, how do you leverage familiarity and reliability to bring your members back for something new? How do you do that thing Disneyland does? How do you keep them coming back for more? So, so far, we've seen how the vision of Disneyland creates the framework for guests to pursue happiness. How a dedication to operational excellence maintains that experience through service and technology with a human touch. And how making, the, how making people happy is the root of organic growth. And we've seen a little bit about how Disneyland ties these ideas together to create a seamless experience for its guests. So in looking at our final theme, which is selling our story, Disneyland provides us a final lesson. Generation after generation come back to Disneyland because it offers that practically eternal promise that happiness can be found here. Because Disneyland enables guests to connect with their own imaginations and share their happy experiences with others. They take ownership of this place. They love this place. We have all bought into the Disney magic. And Disneyland is constantly rewarded with return visits, profits, positive word of mouth. It's really the gateway to gaining new guests. New guests, new members. If you think about it, Disneyland has something very much in common with credit unions. What we share is people. Walt Disney, who was a master storyteller, said it best. He said, you can design and create and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it takes people to make the dream a reality. As our think finalists have demonstrated, inside your credit union, there are people who are eager to perform and deliver a better guest experience, or a better experience for members, I guess, in your nomenclature, mm -hmm. um, to add the magic touch to the reality of financial services. And outside your credit union, there are people who would be happy to enter a place that offers them a more imaginative vision of what financial services could be. People are the same everywhere. The same moms, dads, and kids who might come to your credit union come to Disneyland. Beyond capturing checking accounts and even check images, we <laughs> have to uh, take a look at how we can capture imaginations by selling our story. Think about the opportunity we have. We can impact the real lives of real people in real ways. So it is our sincere hope that after participating in the Think Experience over the next few days here at Disneyland, that you will return home with a new sense that you can have fun and feel happy about what your credit union brings to the world. Now, it's our pleasure to introduce you to your guide through this Disneyland adventure, the host of Think 11, Valerie Coleman Morris. Valerie has a proven talent at guiding audiences through the latest thinking in business and finance, from TV viewers and radio listeners to readers of her blog and published works. As a former CNN domestic and international correspondent, Valerie knows the story. Her point of view about money has been shaped by first-hand experiences in, with financial customs from Europe to Asia. But while she has a global perspective, she is a passionate advocate for personal, individual financial empowerment and engagement. In her book, Mind Over Money Matters, it's designed to give readers a new way to recalculate their personal relationships with their money. So as we do some big thinking over the next few days, look to Valerie to connect the dots and to focus your attention on the issues and the insights that might hit home for your individual credit union members. And, and now, now, please welcome, welcome Valerie Coleman-Morris. Coleman -Morris.